bring this online. Hello, everyone. Hopefully we got everybody coming in. We're set finishing setting up right now. So you guys just get to hang out with me for a little bit. Probably get my headphones on so we can hear everything. So today we're going to be with Michael Chennault. And we're going to be talking about A Song of Ice and Fire. I'm super excited about it, about that. We started playing some of the Game of Thrones stuff at home quite recently. And I'm excited about all the different expansions. So, And we're going to have some, some awesome slides and everything. Yay, you can hear me. That's always fantastic. <laughs> we're also going to be taking questions from the audience directly as well as from our live audience online. So you guys, so... Make sure to leave us comments using the at, or I'm sorry, not the at, the hashtag Simon Expo 2019, and then the hashtag A Song of Ice and Fire, and that is abbreviated. You're going to see it in our up next right after this, so you can kind of get that. And well, then we'll also have it in the chat, and it should be on the uh, Facebook and YouTube chat as well, so you know what you're doing. Okay, and hopefully we can get YouTube up and going here in just a minute as well. What else do we have going on? We are going to have other panels later as well, and that's going to be tomorrow, I believe. We're not, I don't think we're doing another panel live today, but make sure to leave your questions and everything. Let me pull this up for you guys. What else do we want to talk about? Watching on YouTube and not sure if chat is working or not. All right, YouTube people. I'm going to re-add YouTube, guys, so hopefully we can get all of you on here. Is it streaming in just yet? Yay! We're live on YouTube now, too. And our chat does encompass Facebook and YouTube users, so everybody should be able to see everybody's commentary. You guys should all be able to talk with each other and hang out and stuff. Yep, so there should be another link that we're going to post in the old YouTube chat right now. And you should be able to go ahead and get to the new one. That's what happens when we don't start just on time. Yes, we do, except it's in, um, yep, mm -hmm. yep, yep, yep. So, guys, what are you guys most excited to hear about for A Song of Ice and Fire? Sure can. Right there. Hopefully that's a little bit better for you guys. So, for A Song of Ice and Fire, what are you guys most excited about? I know that... Michael was talking about having the Reigns of Castamere play in the background, which I don't think we can do that online. <laughs> Stannis the Manus. He is <laughs> Stannis Baratheon the man. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, absolutely, absolutely. I will message that right now. Yep, we're going to go to the event page. And, oh, Stannis is the king we deserve. <laughs> All right. We got to make some changes, guys. Bear with us. Hopefully we can get you all on the same page watching all the same stuff here. This is what happens when you do live stuff. You always end up getting where there's mistakes that happens. I mean, that's what live stuff is all about. They're scrambling. Okay, perfect. Let's see here. We want to see Euron, that evil bad boy. Jeez. 
Do we have a bunch of bad boy fans in the chat? Is that what that is? <laughs> All right, I just redropped the YouTube live link, so hopefully that'll work out for you guys. Let me know. Hoping to hear word on the Greyjoys. I wish we could have seen more about the Greyjoys. The Greyjoys were really interesting. So I did drop a new link for the live on that one. And we're just setting up a projector right now because we're going to have some screens and everything. So we will be live with Michael and Rhea here in just a few moments, guys. Thanks so much for waiting on us. I'm excited to see what's on these slides, though. I need more cool mini or not minis. Or I guess, you know, I don't know if everybody knows this, but Cool Mini or Not, or Simon Games, is doing, they're like changing the way you pronounce Simon to Come On. Is that right, Rhea? Come On Games. That's the new way that everybody's going to be saying it. Come on. It's, we're doing a Come On. So everybody, I'm going to say Simon Games forever, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to accidentally say it the wrong way for a very long time. <laughs> but yeah, I just went ahead and found that out today. So we need a White Walker set. Oh, that sounds amazing. The way to make Michael and Rhea louder. Yes, there is. Whenever we actually switch over to them, I'm going to unmute them. And that does end up making them a little bit louder. <laughs> Yay! Don't look, don't look at the screen yet, guys. Don't look at the screen yet. Spoilers. <laughs> okay, so if you guys are going to be voicing your questions, make sure to do them in chat. Also, our live audi audience, if you guys are going to be doing questions, make sure to do them in chat if you guys can, as we're going to be trying to filter everything through there, okay? And we're going to try to get everybody together. We're going to be using the hashtag Simon Expo 2019. Let me get the other hashtags up here for you. We're also going to be doing a song of ice and fire. So hashtag A-S-O-I-F-T-M-G. Okay. And the UK Games Expo hashtags as well are all going to work for fielding your questions, which is... Where's the UK? Okay. Uh, hashtag UKGE2019, and I'm going to drop this in the chat here. So everybody has the information, because I'm sort of nice like that. I'm helpful sometimes. <laughs> All right, and they're almost set up, guys. If I was standing up, I would do a song and dance for you guys, but it's, I'm sitting down, and that doesn't work out very well. <laughs> oh, my God, the hype. We all <laughs> yes. Okay, perfect, guys. Are you guys ready to start? Yay. Yay. Okay. So, thanks you for everybody that's joining us today. We're going to go ahead and start up now. Thank you so much for waiting. And again, if you have any questions per for online or per the audience and everything, make sure to funnel them all through chat. That would be fantastic so we can kind of pull them from there. And we will see you guys in just a few moments. Okay, here we are. Fantastic. Everyone excited today? <laughs> okay, we had some small difficulties here, but don't worry, we're going to make up for it because we have an insane amount of content to cover. So I'm Michael Schnall, one of the designers for Song of Ice and Fire, and we're just going to get right into it because, as I said, we have a lot of excitement to cover and, well, time crunch. So let's move on to our n first thing we're going to discuss. This is going to be very 
pertinent for everyone here and the competitive community especially. So first thing we are going to be talking about today is, as this slide says, this is called updates. Um, the game has been out for roughly a year at this point, and we've had um, a lot of feedback from the fan community as well as the tournament cir uh, circuits and feedback and all that. And in an effort to make sure that everything is playable and everything is just up to basically the same snuff, we are going to have a small selection of updates to existing units to basically bring them up to the level that we initially want them to be at. Um, for any of the competitive community out there, you'll know that some options are just, well, you know, why would I take these versus others? Poor Sandor Clegane, one of my favorite guys from the setting, uh, his, uni uh, his attachment card is just, you know, maybe not the best thing out there. Um, the Umber Champion, that poor uh, neglected attachment from the Starks that I have yet to see in any, like, competitive list. Things like that we don't like seeing. We want to make sure that everything that you guys have is playable at all times and that if you guys really like something, you should be able to run it. So as a result, we are reevaluating certain attachments and certain um, NCUs and units like that, and we are going to bring them up to a, a better place to be. Uh, the initial focus here is going to be actually the six ones that you see here. As you see, we're going to be focusing on the initial Wave 1 stuff of Starks and Lannisters. Now, for you Stark players out there, uh, hopefully you get to enjoy the current meta because we actually couldn't find many things in your faction that was not just widely taken or just playable. The one exception was the Umber Champion, so we gave him a little bit of a buff. Lannisters, you guys had a little bit more options. For the competitive players out there, as mentioned, Sandor Clegane, uh, the three-point... Um, Gregor Clegane, uh, Lord Tywin's Mad Dog, uh, Tyrion Lannister, Tywin Lannister's NCU, and then the Jamie Lannister Commander card from the starter box. We felt that he was just uh, underperforming a little bit compared to other commanders, so we gave him a little power boost. Now, I know that you guys might not be able to see these and actually read them fully clearly, and we don't want to go through each of them fully in depth here because we have a little bit more of a surprise for you. So this is the live stream that is going on right now at noon Eastern Standard Time. These updates will be live in the War Council app at one o'clock after this pan panel is done. So you guys can download these and start playing with them immediately. Noting that there will be version control history on there noting all this. So for those who are unaware of what our War Council app is, that's is available on both Android, iPhone, all of your major outlets there. That contains all the unit stat cards, full rule book and everything, and is one of the best things that we've released because it's your full game resource. And that's going to include all these updates here so you can immediately start using them. So hopefully this will get you guys excited here just as a tip of the iceberg taste of things to come. But we just want to show that, you know, we do listen to constant fan feedback. We do monitor, you know, our competitive play aspects and our tournament circuit to see how things are developing. And if we ever see things like this are, again, underperforming, that's something to acknowledge. Because we want you guys to be able to play your favorite characters, to be able to use all the units that you want, and to have them be in a good spot. So that's the first thing and hopefully sets the tone for this. Does that make everyone in here excited? Fantastic. And I see we're going to actually limit the amount of just on-the-spot uh, spot questions that we have here because we do have a lot to cover, but I will go ahead and take a couple before we move on to our next bit. So we'll start right over here. So right now we're working out some logistics here to see if we do any type of physical release, but these will be available for print on the website in the FAQ and errata section as well for people who want to print their own physical copies. And again, this will also be available on the app for anyone that wants to use the electronic route as well. Question over here, yes. So as far as the tournaments that are running today and tomorrow, the tournaments today are going to be view Sonic. <laughs> the tournaments today are going to be running the, sta the old cards. Uh, moving from Saturday onward, these will be updated here. So you can run those as well. And the tournament staff is fully aware of those as well. And so there you go there. We're going to move on to our next slide here. We're going to be talking about our newer releases coming up. So, uh, as anyone is fully aware here, I am a fan of the neutral faction because I really like Fulton's. Now, I want to say there is no designer bias there. They're not better than anyone else. They're not worse than anyone else. It's just my personal play style that we have. Um, but we have the a new wave of neutrals coming out, which is more incorporated by our Neutrals Hero Box 2. This is exciting for everyone because most factions, free folk aside, can actually... Uh, take these guys and they're going to expand a bunch of different options that we have here. Uh, this box also is going to include alternate sculpts for both Brienne and Bronn. 
uh, the ones that released during the Kickstarter, so they'll be out. And they also include such fan favorites such as Dario, Walder Frey, and uh, the goat of Heron Hall himself, Vargo Holt, leader of the Brave Companion slash Bloody Mummers. This is going to bring you a bunch of new commander options available for all factions, some new play styles, and some general uh, NCU attachments and things like that that I'm excited about. Uh, so this is going to be the the newest of the upcoming stuff that will be out sooner than most everything else, so we're going to be talking about this in wave format here. Um, is there any way we can... The slides right there are peaking, and we, oh, and ViewSonic is back. There we go. All right. So that is going to be the next thing we have is going to be our wave of neutrals, and again, very exciting. We have Walder Frey, uh, who is actually probably my favorite one in the set. Uh, you're going to have a nice gambit of point costs coming across here. Walder actually is going to be on the more expensive side, but uh, he has an ability called backing the winning side because, you know, the late... Uh, Walder Frey. Not in the fact that he is dead, but he is going to show up only when he knows someone is winning. So in this case, he is going to gain additional benefits if you are the first player or if you control the crown, because, you know, he likes who's in charge. And he is going to start actually decimating units by causing them auto wounds and shutting off abilities to them. But again, it's a high risk, high reward because he can be blocked without proper setup. He's also fairly expensive as well. We're not going to get into full spoilers there. Um, and then, you know, of course, we're going to have some other commanders that are in that box. Vargo Holt, the leader of the Bloody Murmurs slash Brave Companions. He's going to give you another commander option. And this little fan favorite called Dario Nistares as well. Um, everyone's favorite, you know, mercenary, uh, you know, leader of the Stormcrows. Uh, and they're going to give you some alternate play styles as well. And we're going to give just one moment here to bring back up the slides. We're just going to get that working. There we go. Okay. Guys. We're going to take two questions from the audiences here about the neutral faction, if you guys have anything here that you want to ask. Um, I'm not going to give any spoilers, obviously, so if you ask me, like, oh, well, how much does this point cost? That's a wasted question. But does anyone want to know anything before we move on? Okay. We also take some time to answer some uh, random questions from the uh, Facebook or YouTube if we want to take uh, any intermission there. Yeah, if you're on Facebook or YouTube and want to ask any questions, make sure to use our hashtags here, and we'll make sure to field your questions to Michael. Right now, we just have people or people in here going, "Wow, like this is amazing!" So <laughs> everybody seems really excited and impressed about it. Uh, yeah, is there going to be more scenery available? Oh, the uh, the terrain. Yes. So that is something we're looking into as well. That's verging more into the spoiler and production side of things, so I unfortunately don't have a clear answer for that. But, you know, if there is a big enough demand for this, of course, we're going to cater to what we can to the fan base and everything there. And I know that the 3D terrain was definitely something that's been heavily requested. So we have one question from the audience. Uh, unfortunately, on ETA's firm dates and things like that, I just can't uh, give, namely because that's a... Sorry? Oh, it'll definitely be out sooner rather than later on that, on the neutral guys. Okay, so I guess we can move on to the next slide here and just, um, you know, see what that's talking about. <laughs> it's this little thing called the Baratheons. Yeah. Okay. So I guess that these guys are somewhat popular. I mean, I, s <laughs> I vaguely remember them in the books, maybe like a chapter or two, but... Frankly, they were so minor to me that it was just like an afterthought, I guess. But apparently, these little underdogs here and everything were really popular with the fans. And there's some guy named, like, I don't know, like Manus or Stannis, something like that. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, guys. So the next faction we have coming out, which has been uh, in the rumor mill for a while, but we are confirming now, is we have the Baratheons. They will be out before the end of the year. Okay? Now... Who wants to talk a little bit about the Baratheons here? First off, we have some of the models showcased. What we have here is we have the uh, Baratheon Wardens. They're basically going to be one of the core line troops for this faction. And then they're also led there by a Stag Knight Noble, which is showcasing one of their other units that we have. Which, okay guys, I'm going to admit... Uh, the Baratheons are not my fan favorite thing that I have. I mean, I like Stannis just like everyone else, and man, I can already, I feel <laughs> the international wave that is just like crashing down of like, I'm sorry, what did he just say? But again, I'm not making this game for myself, and we as a company, we're not making this, you know, for our personal tastes. We're making this for what everyone else likes, and again, Stannis Baratheon and the Baratheons in general are one of the fan favorite and heaviest requested guys. And I gotta say, 
you kind of won me over a bit because you guys got your stag knights there with your antler helmets and your giant war hammers. It's really hard to dislike something that cool. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about these guys and how they're going to play, since I'm pretty sure that's what people want to see, aside from just some cool miniatures here. So the Baratheons are going to be a almost return to form of one of the more traditional armies of Westeros and in the War of Five Kings. The last two armies are released were the Free Folk and the Night's Watch, which have drastically different play styles than a traditional kind of, you know, knightly army and everything. The Baratheons are going to be one of the heaviest armored kind of siege style factions that are out there. Welcome back, ViewSonic. <laughs> Techno oh, it's fine. Technology is, you know, of course, the great enemy of man. Uh, but so the Baratheons are going to be uh, a very heavy siege style army. These guys are going to be some of the heaviest infantry that you're going to see. They've got some of the heaviest cavalry you're going to see. But the big play style you're going to have here, they're not going to be the fastest, but they're going to be the experts of prolonged engagements. If you get stuck into combat with the Baratheons, the longer it goes, the more it's going to favor them. More so, a lot of their tactics are going to be about punishing you for doing things to them. Whereas, you know, you have the Night's Watch, who are kind of jack of all trades. We've got the ability to, you know, handle all situations. You've got the Free Folk, who are going to go and swarm you. The Lannisters, who are going to counter all your, well, counter all your plots and your machinations there. The Starks, who are about uh, ferocity and just getting the charges off. The Baratheons are all about, you do something to us, we're going to do it back to you ten times as bad. And that is represented here by one of the cards, Baratheon Conviction. So target one friendly infantry unit and attach this card to them, and you discard when they fail a morale test. While it's attached, if you control the crown, they are going to um, only suffer one wound from every failed mor uh, morale test, or, sorry, panic test they take. So we're stuck in combat. That's fine. We are fighting for the one true king of Westeros, or Renly Baratheon. <laughs> <laughs> Some spoilers, some very minor spoilers from, you know, things we're just going to talk about here in a bit. Um, and if you control the tactic zone right here, they're going to gain the ability for their defense saves to block two hits. But basically, the worst thing you can do against the Baratheons is get stuck in a prolonged engagement. You're going to want to either take them out very quickly or disengage from that combat, because if you stay in there, they're just going to begin punishing you, as their units are just going to get better and better the longer they maintain in combat, with also a big focus on defense, such as, you know, talking about the Baratheon Wardens here. They are a five-point infantry boasting a three-plus defense and a six-plus morale save. Now, their offensive might is only going to be so-so. You know, they've got a 7-5-4 uh, attack profile, not the worst out there. And then they've got their Warhammers, which is when they attack you, if you roll any ones on your defense save, you're going to basically get concussed as they crack you upside the head of a giant hammer. You know, a very, you know, non-violent weapon. It keeps all the blood on the inside. <laughs> uh, but you're going to become weakened. So these guys are a huge defensive force that are basically going to outlast you and then punish you for staying in combat with them. Let's move on to the next slide. And talk about some other cool stuff. So let's talk about some characters that might be appearing in the starter box here. Um, a little known character named Stannis Baratheon and his brother, Renly Baratheon. Now noting again, as we've said, the last canonical event that happens in our storyline is that King Robert has died. So unfortunately, Robert doesn't make an appearance. Um, no breastplate stretcher, no giant fat Robert. <laughs> um, but Renly Baratheon is alive because again, this is a uh, we don't want to use the necessarily the term fan fiction generator, but again, we have our canonical event. Everything after that is, you know, up to you guys to decide what happens. So Rinley is alive, and he has, of course, allied himself mainly with the forces of Highgarden. So you're definitely going to have some Tyrell allies on his force. And then with Stannis, you know, you've got his traditional knights as well, but also, you know, the followers of the Lord of Light and, you know, Raylor troops on his side. So how is this represented in-game? Well, this faction, above all others, has introduced a new mechanic called loyalty. Loyalty is basically going to state that you cannot mix loyalties within your army. So if you have loyalty, Stannis Baratheon. Then you can only have units that contain loyalty, Stannis Baratheon. You can't mix in ones that have loyalty, Renly Baratheon, for example. Now, there are generic units that both of them can share. And in fact, all the starter box units and NCUs that come in there can be shared by the two brothers. But you're going to have specialized units that only they can take. Now, looking at what else we have in here, uh, the Baratheons have allied themselves with a number of houses with shifting loyalties and bannermen over the entirety of the storyline. And we have a rich gambit to pull from. So while you're going to have your, um, you know, your more uh, famous characters such as Davos Seaworth, by the way, okay, we'll save all the Baratheons, my personal fan favorite there, because I like the pragmatism that we have there. 
you'll have your you know, you'll have Melisandre also teaming up with Stannis. You'll have some of the High Garden favorites teaming up with Loras, or sorry, including Loras teaming up with uh, Rinley. But you're also gonna have some of the lesser known ones like Alice or Florence. Which okay, if you're a book fan, he's an important character as well. Um, which does shift his loyalties around. You're going to have some of the, even the hidden ones here, such as this lady right here that is appearing. Um, that is actually, um, oh, see, I can't even remember her name, and that's such a bad, she's the, that is not Melisandra, although a lot of people were speculating that is. That is actually the Lady of Haystack Hall. Um, oh, I can't remember it. Sorry, I'm going to roasted for this one. Whoops. But, okay, so... That's the cool things about the Baratheons. We have our loyalty mechanics splitting into these two armies with a big focus on defensive and siege-style combat. Now, Stannis and his guys are going to be, of course, the tactical masterminds because Stannis, you know, for whatever your opinions are on him, he is one of the most brilliant tactical minds in all of, the, in all of Westeros. So he is going to have a big focus on condition tokens, punishing the enemy, and using condition tokens for various other effects. Meanwhile, Rinley here is the charismatic heir. He is going to be the center point of the battlefield. When he appears, he is going to become the main focal point of the engagement, and all of the troops around him are going to get buffs because that is Rinley Baratheon. Look how charismatic he is. And also the opponent is going to go, oh crap, that's Rinley Baratheon. Look how charismatic he is. We should probably go try to kill him. But we have a wealth of effects that's going to come up, and we're super excited about them. So let's go ahead and uh, see if anyone has any questions, of course, non-spoiler related, if they want to talk about the Baratheons here. Any questions from the audience? We do have a question uh, just about if there's going to be any larger scale national tournaments. Which oh, might so not organized be play. Yeah. That we will save for the end of the presentation. Okay. I have a whole section Perfect. about that. Okay. Because right now we're in cool, like, spoiler territory and everything. We <laughs> want to keep that train rolling. <laughs> All right, so question here from the audience. The Stagnites. Now, you see, that sounded a lot like give me spoilers for the Stagnites. <laughs> uh, well, they're, they're called Stagnites. They have antlers, and they use giant war hammers. Okay, I'll be a little nicer on this. They actually have a focus on the more of their ranks you destroy, the more cool special abilities they're going to get. So that's actually going to, you're going to see a running theme with the Baratheons, is that they're going to have a lot of nice solid stats probably not the best in the world and they're going to start kind of vanilla like okay they're not going to do a lot of neat stuff when they're just fresh in the fight but the longer that fight goes the more cool stuff they're going to start stacking so the stagnites specifically are going to have an ability where they don't start with anything you know that amazing and their baseline stats are okay but they lose a rank. Okay, here's some cool options for you to pick. They lose another rank. Here's some more cool options for you to pick. We're going to team that up with a stag knight noble who's going to say, oh, you attacked us? We're going to take some wounds to ourselves, and now we're going to do a re retaliatory attack against you here. So we're going to have that big focus of just anything you do to us, we're going to turn around and do something much worse for you. So again, a savvy opponent is going to pick and choose exactly how they engage the Baratheons because if you just go in there and decide you're going to start hammering into them, then, okay, that's almost pun territory. They're going to hammer you back a little harder. <laughs> Any puns, by the way, just for a disclaimer, are completely unintentional. Puns are the lowest form of humor and just absolutely terrible in all ways, shape, and forms. <laughs> okay. We do have a question here. Oh, yes, absolutely. For mixed loyalties. I just saw it. Oh, my goodness. No, this sounds... Oh, so... Uh, <laughs> Not to give any spoilers here, but Stannis here. Now, we do, um, just for anyone who is unaware, any of our artwork or miniatures or anything that we do passes through George R. R. Martin, his little camp and everything for approvals. So, you know, they have a hand in going, like, this fits in with our vision for, you know, what we want to see for the books, for the setting, all this. Um, but Stannis here is actually based on our... Um, on a C1 employee that we have, a very important employee that we have, of uh, Matthew, who is our... Uh, director, uh, or basically our creative director. Uh, he actually just happened to look enough like Stannis where we, where we were able to use him. It's not like we just took him and go like, no, Stannis looks like him now. He actually just looks like Stannis. <laughs> um, uh, now, a bit of a thing though, we because Stannis is described as having near bald comb over, we, we had to make the compromise there where we did have to do that a little bit. So that was the trade-off for, you know, okay, you're going to be Stannis, but we're going to have to take off a lot of your hair. <laughs> So that so was the uh, the trade-off there. Will the Baratheons have excellent archers like the books? 
So those who like ranged combat and archers, you're going to have some fun options here, including some very unique Raylor troops for Stannis specifically, which I'm not going to spoil any more than that because, you know, again, I personally don't like spoilers, but I, I'm feeling nice today. So we will give that little bit of a hint. Um, but basically, if it's whatever cool thing you can possibly imagine, Multiply that by 10, because these guys are really, really cool. Again, as I've got to stress, I was not the biggest fan of Stannis or the Baratheons. Not that I had anything against them, but I was just, yeah, okay, they, they exist. But they really won me over, where every time our, um, our, we would get a new piece of art, uh, whether it was concept art or miniatures or anything, I would go like, oh, man, that's, okay, that's really, really cool. And then it just kept compounding on top of that. Like, we got the pictures of the Baratheon Wardens in. It's like, man, that's really cool. And then the Stag Knights came in. And it was like, okay, that's, that's really, really kind of badass and cool there. And then we started just seeing all the character sculpts come in. I mean, it's, it's again, for me, I came in, like, with the Baratheons. going like, okay, we'll make them for the fans. And now it's like, all right, I, I'm going to play these guys because they're, they're really cool as well. You're not going to sway me from House Bolton because you've got to keep your loyalties which is a bit ironic talking about the Boltons there. But, okay, we have that. All right. And I'm sorry, we have one, oh, sure, one, one last more. one. Can we take uh, the, Baratheon, the Baratheons and Joffrey? So they're talking about the more about the mixed loyalties with Okay, stuff. so Joffrey is with the Lannisters because while he is yeah. Joffrey Baratheon, first of his name, we know where the loyalties lie. While it is technically House Baratheon that controls King's Landing, um, it is, come on, the power behind the throne here is Cersei Lannister, Tywin Lannister, and the Lannisters. Oh, by the way, spoilers for, you know, these books that came out in the seasons that ended and everything here. So, um, yeah, if you're just getting into A Song of Ice and Fire, by the way, then I guess this entire presentation has been a bunch of spoilers. But I've got a question what weird demographic you belong to. Okay, let's move on to the next panel uh, here. Talking about the number one question <laughs> that I have been asked. <laughs> This is the single biggest que sorry, question that I have been asked in the entire history of this game's development from day one onward, where will there be dragons? Now, luckily, guys, I have compiled a 2,046-page thesis on Song's most asked questions. If we could do a favor and just go ahead and lock those doors as we're going to read through it in its entirety here for the rest of the weekend. <laughs> Live stream, guys, I unfortunately couldn't figure out a way to lock the live stream, so you guys were stuck. So you guys, I guess, can turn away, but really the interesting stuff happens around page 1520-something, so we'll get there. Okay, now luckily for this question, we have a very distinct one-word answer to give you guys, um, and that is the next slide. Hodor. <laughs> All right, guys, and that is going to conclude our presentation here, and we thank you all for showing. Okay, fine, fine, fine. We have one more thing to talk about, and I suppose that is going to be the next slide that we go after. The Targaryens. So we have the Baratheons, and Stannis Baratheon, the one true king, and then Renly Baratheon, the uh, also apparently one true king that wants to take over. But we also have some folks that are living across the Narrow Sea, led by, you know, a little, you know, a minor known character named Daenerys Targaryen. She may or may not have dragons, by the way. I mean, there's been some rumors that she got a couple eggs and they may have hatched. But we have our Baratheon release that's coming out toward the, uh, uh, before the end of the year. We also have our Targaryens, by the way, that are coming out before the end of the year. I'm not going to say they're going to be released at the same time. Not going to even touch that topic. Not even going to talk about timetables there because we got to keep some spoilers there going and everything, guys. But we are announcing here as well we have the Targaryens. The fun thing about these guys, let's talk a little bit about their starter set. Not next slide yet. No, no. That's fine. It's not that. But this is going to be our first fully mounted starter set as this is going to represent Daenerys when she was first uh, starting out and was basically um, the Khaleesi of Khal Drogo's Khalasar. This is going to be an entirely mounted starter box featuring your own private Dothraki horde. Featuring Dothraki screamers, Dothraki archers, and Dothraki veterans as well. Uh, these guys are going to be a full cav army uh, and 
super fast with a focus on getting those charges in and dealing a ton of damage. These guys are almost a opposite here of the Baratheons, whereas the Baratheons want to get in there and really get stuck in combat, and the longer they stay in combat, the better they're going to be. The Targaryens here, specifically the Dothraki focus here, is going to be about lightning quick charges, maneuverability, and really getting in there and getting that alpha strike in. These guys are not good at prolonged engagements, though, as that whole concept of armor is not really something they're about. So while they've got really good morale, they don't have the best defense out there. But if you guys want to play a lightning quick army that is just going to slam into them, deal a ton of damage, and take your opponents down, that's what these guys are about. Let's move on to the next slide here and talk about some characters. So, representing our starter box here, we have Khal Drogo and Daenerys Targaryen showing up as an NCU here. And we also have a couple of other minor characters here, you know, maybe Jor Mormont here. You know, again, mounted. A minor character, you know, had a bit of an arc. And then I see my favorite guy here of Elio Mofoes, which is actually the giant gentleman here that gave Daenerys her eggs. Um, also noted as being one of the fattest men in the setting. <laughs> this was actually meticulous. We went through a couple rounds of approvals because we kept having to make his miniature fatter. <laughs> <laughs> Because he is actually described, like, we were just like, okay, he's described as a fat guy in the books, and yeah, he is. And then we sent the miniature in for approval, and they're like, no, 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 fatter. It's like, oh, okay. So he came back, and they're like, no, no, you, you didn't seem to understand. Fatter. <laughs> 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 so he is showing up here as well. Uh, the Targaryens are, again, represented by just dealing extreme damage on the charge and making it so... Uh, they're just going to punish anyone they come across. This is represented by one of their tactics cards, Fury of the Dragon. When you claim a zone on the tactics board, replace that zone's effect with one friendly combat unit that make a free maneuver or retreat action. In addition to this, until the end of the round, any time a friendly unit successfully charges, their target is going to become panicked or vulnerable. So again, lightning fast assaults with a focus of getting in there and dealing heavy, heavy damage. And then of course you're going to have your Options here, such as Khal Drogo leading your entire army, giving you additional benefits, and of course, getting you in there and dealing a ton of damage on the charge here as well. Uh, of course, representing this nice Targaryen purple color as well. Um, but so we have our entire mounted faction here coming out. Now, of course, not to say that the faction is just going to be mounted, because this represents all of Daenerys's combined forces going throughout her arcs as well. Now, we're going to circle back to our initial question we asked Will there be dragons? Okay, guys, it's Targaryens. It's Daenerys. Sorry, there's just not going to be any... No, we're going to have dragons. Now, the thing to note here as well is that we're going to also be representing dragons at different stages in their life cycles here as well. We're following the path of the books here. Um, I'm not going to get into too much of the book history and whatnot, so we will have dragons appearing at various forms and things like that, and also some minor spoilers, I suppose. Daenerys being one of the characters that experienced the most growth arcs throughout the entire series, this is again representing her when she was the Khaleesi of, you know, Khal Drogo's um, Khalasar. This is that point in the storyline representing her. You may or may not see other versions of here, such as, you know, the Queen of Marine or, you know, the Mother of Dragons. You know, again, we can have different uh, versions of characters appearing from different points in the books. In fact, there was this little, you know, known phrase that we kept having to say of, if it's in the books, it can be in the game. I almost considered just printing that across a t-shirt here, because that is still true. So most of your questions that you would like to ask, you know, if it's in the books, there's a strong chance that it can appear in the game. You know, we just want all the cool stuff there, and frankly, there's no small shortage of cool stuff to just show. So I guess we will field some questions about the Targaryens if anyone here wants to ask anything about those. Question in the back. All of so that right there, asking if we're going to have Unsullied comes down to, can you give me spoilers? Are we going to have Unsullied? <laughs> 
I will say that one of the uh, the primary fighting forces for Daenerys Targaryen, it would be a shame if we didn't include those guys. Now, all the starter boxes for anyone um, who maybe is just getting into the game or whatnot, all of our starter boxes are based around building a 30-point list with variety past that, so most of the starter boxes will get you between 35 and 40 points. And, of course, the newer ones are going to be no exception to that. So they'll fall right the same lines as the Stark Lannisters. Um, the Free Folk and the Night's Watch. Now, just to note as well, by the way, these are distinct separate starter boxes. This is not a Baratheon versus Targaryen starter box. This is a Targaryen starter box and a Baratheon starter box, just like our other single faction focuses. All right, do we have any questions for the live stream we want to pull from or YouTube? Is... There a possibility that there will be the Unsullied and Drothraki as neutral characters as well. These guys are firmly in the camp of following, you know, a Daenerys Targaryen. Now, again, as nothing to say, in the future, you know, you might see different versions of units, characters, and, you know, it might even be full factions that appear in multiple places. So I know, okay... Let's talk some other minor spoilers here. Everyone here is going like, oh man, I really like Tyrells, I really like Highgarden, and these guys are tied up with Rinley? You're right. At this point in the game's release, they're firmly in the camp of Rinley Baratheon. That's not to say later, that can't be something different. Not to say it will or not, I can either confirm nor deny that, and don't read too much into that as like, you know, wink, wink. But anything can happen. We can have versions of different characters appear in cross factions. We can have versions of different units appear in cross factions. We can have, you know, entire, not factions appearing in other factions, because that doesn't make a lot of sense. But, you know, the loyalties for different things shift, you know, throughout the entire of the setting of not only the War of Five Kings, but afterwards as well. So, you know, don't think just because something is appearing here that is excluded from appearing elsewhere. Question from the audience, yes. Oh, they'll be out this year as well. So, we also have: Will there be catapults and machines since we're having dragons? <laughs> That's another question about asking for spoilers here as well. If we're gonna have more <laughs> siege stuff, and I'm just gonna say on that, you're gonna have to wait and see because we can't give everything away. I mean, come on, guys! We revealed Baratheons, we revealed Targaryens, completely overshadowing my favorite thing of the neutral release. <laughs> um, they just can't get enough. And of course, <laughs> the question is like: More, more! Give me more! But I. <laughs> yeah, they really want to hear you sing a Michael Bolton song. <laughs> For anyone unaware of this little running joke, is that you know one of the sculpts in the game is myself as an alternate Dreadford captain. So therefore, the joke has become, oh, we have a Michael Bolton figure. And to quote just like other movies, you know, ho, oh, you share that name and everything. Yeah, 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 that's nice. Uh, a personal shout out to Jim Ludwig, who is the owner of Dark Sword Miniatures, who we partnered with to bring this fantastic game to you, who every single time I've had any conversation with for the last year plus has started it out with, sing me a song, Michael. <laughs> and to him, he laughs and laughs and laughs, and it never gets old to him. And this is how every one of our conversations starts. <laughs> a personal sacrifice I make for you, the fans. So, shout out to Jim. I have a sneaking suspicion he's one of the ones that started that in there. But if not, I'm going to blame him for that anyway. I believe we had a question from someone in the back. Yes? No, you'll see, so you'll see stuff that is released that might have these keywords and everything, but the stuff that's out is out. You know, a lot of people, like, you know, talking about, like, well, Boltons, you know, they're going to be able to team up with Targaryens, they're going to be able to team up with Baratheons, and the answer is absolutely yes, because, you know, if Daenerys shows up with three dragons across the Narrow Sea and starts burninating the countryside and everything, I can absolutely bet you that Roose Bolton is going to go, hey, guess what, you know what, we'll, we'll team up with you guys, because they're opportunists. You know, just because it's not something that canonically happened in the books, the whole thing is a giant, you know, again, what-if scenario here. And I can guarantee you that, you know, if someone showed up and just started winning, you can't tell me that Roos Bolton or Ramsey Bolton is not going to go, okay, you know what, maybe we should side with them. Or, you know, maybe the Golden Company or, you know, the Second Sons or, you know, the Storm Crows, you know, were hired out by, you know, the Starks to help them out. Again, just use the power of your imagination, guys. I mean, you know, that's the whole thing here. 
All right, so let's take two more questions from the audience here before we move on to our uh, next little things to talk about. Have any questions, the audience, or the Facebook or the YouTubes? Oh, question here. Oh, well, a full mounted cavalry army is definitely going to be super fast as well, but they do have a focus on speed, um, namely through their cavalry moves, but they do have some nasty tricks, uh, including, actually, okay, we'll talk about one of their other um, cards right here. Actually, Daenerys, if we look at her uh, NCU card right here, she has an influence effect with the, uh, the name of the Conviction of the True Khaleesi. When you influence the unit of her, they're going to roll plus two attack dice and plus one to their movement value which is going to be doubly effective when you have an entire army of cavalry because that means they're going to get plus one movement to their already fast cavalry move and then their free action after that, which can be a charge or another maneuver. So the whole thing... Oh, excuse me. The whole thing about the um, Targaryens is while they don't have a bunch of sly tricks, they have just a bunch of raw combat buffs. So, you know, while the Lannisters are going to have these sneaky intrigue and subterfuge and, you know, you know, behind-the-scenes machinations they're going to do. The Dothraki and the Targaryens are going to be about, we're going to go make those guys dead really efficiently. So that's going to be a lot of their play style. So, you know, if you don't want to deal with any of this backstage politics and tactics here and whatnot and just want to run a big horde of guys who are just going to kill you, that's going to be a big focus for the, uh, the initial wave of the Targaryens. That's not to say you don't have other options because, okay, you know, there's a strong chance you may or may not have Unsullied. You know, the most disciplined, elite, rank-and-file troops that appear in almost the entire world, they're going to play a little bit differently than, you know, your screaming Dothraki horde. So, just like the other factions out there, you're going to have other options for your different play styles as well. Because that's one of the big things that we want to push in the game, is just because you're picking your faction, you're going to have your baseline play style that this is how they're going to function and operate. You know, Lannisters are always going to be sneaky. Um, Starks are always going to be very noble and get killed a lot. Uh, <laughs> but... In between that, you're going to have your sub play styles. Like everyone who plays the game, you know that a umber led Starkless plays drastically different than one led by Rob Stark, and that's going to be no different than any of the other armies here. So, you know, if I if what I've described were here, where you're going like, man, I really like Daenerys, I really like that setting, but just playing this hyper aggressive, you know, uh, cavalry list that doesn't really appeal to me. You're going to have other options and play styles because just think of all the cool characters, you know, the cool leaders that you have in there and they're going to drastically change how you play. Like, for example, my personal favorite character in the entire setting. Now, I said before that my loyalties do lie of House Bolton. That's because I just think they're really cool. But my personal favorite character is Barristan Selmy. I do have a soft spot for, you know, the old grizzled knights and, you know, that style of theme. Uh, he may or may not be appearing with the Targaryens at some point because, you know, he kind of does that. His play style of you know, is going to drastically be different than, one, than say, Grey Worms or, you know, Khal Drogo. You know, it's going to play a lot differently. When you're going back to the Baratheons, um, I will say that they have a strong focus on Stannis and Rinley, but those are not the only commanders that you're going to see. You know, again, you've got the forces of, you know, Highgarden rallying behind um, Rinley, so you're going to have Loras, um, you know, teaming up there on Stannis' side. You're going to have Davos Seaward, again, one of my other favorite characters here as well. Um, and may or may not even have some different versions of Rinley and Stannis representing their different convictions. You know, like, you might have a version of Stannis, you might, just talking spoilers and everything, that's really gone full into the whole Azor Azai, you know, followers of Raylor style of things. You know, flaming swords, flaming arrows, just fire themes all around. Fire is a really potent method of scaring and killing guys, by the way. I don't know if you've ever been alive at any point in your life, but fire bad. All right, so before we wrap up this little section here, move on to kind of an open Q&A about anything in general. Does anyone have any more Targaryen and Baratheon-focused questions here? Of course. We give and we give and we give, and they take and they take and they take. <sighs> All right, another question from the audience. Oh, so there'll be different unit boxes released and everything, and you know there may or may not be a dragon box and whatnot. But as far as starter sets, this is the, the those are the entry points to the faction. They're going to give you you know the same thing as the previous starter sets, you know your generic tactics deck, your characters there. But the whole point about like there being different versions of characters and whatnot is even looking into the future for Stark and Lannister releases and really any existing factions, but specifically those two because they're the initial ones. You know you will see alternate versions of characters that you have seen before. Uh, Again, 
like taking Rob Stark. You know, we have him as two versions out right now, the young wolf and then the wolf lord. But as not to say, you know, in a Stark potential hero box three, you might not see Rob Stark king in the north, you know, and he plays completely different, representing him in a different point in the storyline. You know, you'll have Carl Drogo here as, you know, the leader of the great Kalasar, and then you have Carl Drogo, a dead guy who doesn't do anything. Okay, well, you won't see that version. But again, like, Daenerys is probably the character that went through the most changes throughout the different arcs. And so you will see different versions of her. Here, she's not even a commander because she never commanded anything at this point in the storyline. But again, the storyline, as far as the books and the game goes, is very fluid. This is not necessarily, you know, the game is not progressing at the same uh, pace there. You know, we're jumping around and having that. So you might have her in her version of the Mother of Dragons. You'll see her as, you know, the Queen of Marine. Or, you know, spoilers for Winds of Winter and Visions of Spring and all that. Not that we have any of those because, you know, we're anxiously awaiting the uh, the next books to come out as well because that gives us more material to pull from. So there we have that. So I guess we'll open this up now to uh, the last little bit of time here to any just questions in general about organized play, our updates, anything we've talked about or anything that might be on your guys' mind. Not to promise we'll answer any of those questions because, you know, spoilers is spoilers, but it doesn't hurt to ask. So start with the audience here. Yes. Uh, so we do have an internal amount because here's another thing that we want to make sure doesn't have happen. We don't want to have uh, what we would call faction bloat. And that's you just keep releasing more and more stuff for a faction to the point where all factions just become a palette swap of each other. That's something we want to avoid. So we do have a rough idea about the cap of how many units will be released per faction. Not going to get into specifics there because, of course, that changes based on the meta and how the game evolves. But we definitely... Always keep a strong focus on making sure that a faction has a unique identity. We never want it to be, I'm playing against Lannisters that play more like Starks than they do Lannisters, or get to the point where it's just, oh, you're playing Starks, Lannisters, Baratheons, whatever. These are all the same army, just I'm playing the yellow version or the red version or the blue version. That's something we want to avoid. And so anytime we release a unit, we want it to be something new and cool, something unique, but something that feels like it is bringing something new to the faction. If we ever hit a point where we feel that we're releasing units for a faction just for the sake of releasing units, that's a point we never we want to hit. We want to feel every release for a faction means something for the meta of that faction and contributes something new and unique to them that is not just making them play like something that already exists. So unfortunately, you know, while you know, you might be a Lannister player at heart and like really like that whole intrigue and subterfuge and politics side of things, you're never going to get something like that if you play Free Folk because they ain't so heavy on the uh, the politics. Question in the back, yes. So the Night King, I'll straight up say, does not exist in the books in any way, shape, and form. Okay? I mean, if, well, sorry, outside of legends and whatnot, but that is an important distinction is that everything we do is based on the book series. So if it's in the books, it can be in the game. Conversely, if it's not in the books and is made up by some other medium, whether it be like comic books, fan fictions, TV shows, movies, whatever it might be, if it's something that exists in those mediums, it's going to stay in those mediums. If it appears in the books, though, then it can absolutely appear in our game. Question over here. Yes. So the scenarios are are one of the the favorite things that uh, we have released online, and we will continue to release those online. Uh, in fact, we have our lead developer of the game, Fabio Curry, who actually, at this very moment this weekend, was finalizing a new scenario to have no release ETA on that. But because we did get such good feedback for like the Battle of Whispering Woods and the special scenarios like that, because you guys like recreating the big famous you know battles, like okay, we just talked about Baratheons. I'm sure the Battle of the Blackwater is something that people probably want to you know reenact. Uh, definitely, if there's a fan demand for things like that, we will cater to you guys because we're here for you. You know, whatever you guys want to see, let us know. You know, go to our Facebook page. You know, we have unofficial you know, Facebook groups, you know, to talk about. We've got our forums. You know, these are all venues to interact. We've got our Twitter accounts. Uh, all of these, you know, just let us know what you want to see and, you know, what type of things you want to see. And if it's a cool idea and it's something we can do, we'll absolutely, you know, make it happen. 
a uh, question in the back here. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that ties into what I was saying earlier about just because something appears in one place does not mean it cannot appear in other places as well. So uh, like right now, we are getting to see our first look at the Tyrells, and they are in fact uh, sided firmly with Renly Baratheon. That is not to say at a later point you might not see them branch off on their own into their own full-fledged faction, or, you know, as neutral units, all, or, you know, even tied up with you know, Targaryens at some point, if that happens. You know, again, never limit, uh, nothing is limited. Just because it appears in one place does not mean it cannot appear somewhere else. And in fact, um, oh, I don't need, I'm not even going to talk about this, but you might see a big curveball with some characters that you see that you're like very firmly affiliated with one faction. You might get a curveball that all of a sudden they appear and like, wait, why are they in this faction? And it might be because, well, for a very brief window, in, you know, Storm of Swords or Clash of Kings or one of these books, they did jump over here and appear here. Even that little minor stuff can show up. And I guarantee you when it happens sometimes, people are going to go, what? But, hey, that's a, that's a spoiler for, you know, a future date. Next question. Like, I know you just said you noticed the leaves in 1.4. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a hockey that looking at the extended range on uh, Saul Blackburn's catapult ballistics, et cetera, do you think this has something to do with so uh, the, t uh, the question there is when more siege style weaponry weaponry ah, weaponry is released, uh, talking about extended rages and things like that. Okay, so I will have to say that would be spoilers, but when you see their unit cards, that question will be answered because obviously a catapult is throws rocks pretty far. So. But again, that's the thing to note, is that we have our baseline system. Everything in the core system can be modified via unit cards, abilities, and things like that. So while we have our foundation, then we have all these special case scenarios that can always change. You know, like for example, you know, like the Scorpion weapon crew and whatnot. It's got its single shot volley and then its, you know, ability to fire multiple shots. That's not something that's covered in the rule book because it hits into, you know, the unit cards. Anything and everything that is a core rule can be modified by tactics cards, attachments, unit cards, so, you know, that's the answer that I have for that. Um, organized play and more of a national scale with that. Oh, yes, so let's return back to the organized play topic. So um, that is definitely something we as a company are look uh, want to look into and support. You know, we want to start baseline, you know, we have our organized play kits to support the local stores and whatnot. And as the game grows, as it matures out, you know, we are open to any avenues, you know, for – Basically making it so not only just the fans, but the stores that support us, you know, our retail partners and everything, whatever they want to see, whatever you guys want to see, we will, you know, do our best to make that happen. So, you know, when we go, man, we want to have regionals from a state level or we want to have things from a national level and whatnot, you know, if these are things that you guys demand, we see the support for and everything. Regardless of what that is, we will try our best to absolutely make sure it happens. Now, of course, timetables and things like that, that's getting into some spoiler things and some logistics that we can't really talk about too much here. But, again, we're aware of whatever demand people have out there. And that's, again, extending from just the casual players. You know, again, with the scenarios that we release, we want to cater to you guys. And from a competitive standpoint, we can have our updates that we're giving for our units to make sure that everything is competitive. And that extends to all facets of the game, from any levels of organized play, whether it's just casual guys who just want to play, you know, with their friends in their basement, or the local libraries, which that seems like it would be a poor choice to play a war game in a library, but okay, support, support that. To your local game stores, to, you know, the hardcore tournament people who want to have, you know, just your big major events and go and curb stomp people and get prizes and just go like, yeah, I'm the real king of... Uh, I guess this region, and then eventually the north. You know, we want to support all facets. So, again, what you guys want to have happen, just you know, just give that to us, and we'll of course you know, work with you. Question over here. Oh. Was that a threat? 
I tell you what, let's double down. Just wipe them all out, okay? <laughs> we'll pull a full lady on this one. <coughs> By the way, my favorite story, just for anyone who's not aware, um, just to show our full dedication for better or for worse when it comes to, you know, sticking to our timetables and whatnot. We had um, Sansa was originally released with a Lady Direwolf model, one of my favorite models in the entire range. And a fan was very quick to point out that Lady was actually killed before Robert died in the books, which is our canonical starting point for the setting. Ergo, she couldn't be in the game even in sculpt form because she was dead by then. So we had to remove that from the miniature because we have a very stick a stickler to our timetable. So that's something that's constantly brought up because people see that and go like, oh, lady, she's so cute. I'm like, yeah, she's dead. <laughs> she's also dead, by the way. So, you know, that's just, again, showing our dedication. Now, also to talk about, you know, our set timetable for the game is King Robert has died. Anything after that's free game. So the big thing that gets brought up is people go, you know, Ned Stark, you know, he's dead by that point, right? No, he was captured. He didn't die by that. So that's the technical aspect of that. Um, as not to say, you know, we can't do anything pre or post. Again, if it's in the books, it can appear. All right, guys, that's what we have for today. Uh, hopefully you guys have gotten a bunch of cool information, and this will keep you guys chattering for a while. And, of course, pay attention to our Facebook page, you know, our Twitter account, because, you know, we also have some other things that we will cover through there in the coming time and whatnot. And uh, get you guys from there. So we appreciate anyone who came by and, uh, you know, joined us today for this. We appreciate our UK live streamers and everything there. And uh, for everyone else who's here at the Expo for the weekend, uh, feel free to drop by if any other questions or whatnot. Hope you guys all enjoyed it today, and that will conclude our panel. Hello, live audience. Thanks so much for joining us today. So hopefully we got some of your questions answered. And if you have any other ones, make sure to leave them in the comments. We're also going to be doing some giveaways and stuff like that. So leave lots of questions, and we will go ahead and get back to you guys on that. And you know what, Michael, since you're here, I have one last question for you. Upgrade cards for Starks and other people as you're going through. Are those going to be available? Uh, so we have those available for print. We will have those available for print on the website with the newest. For print on the website, for the newest okay. range of the FAQ and then through the app. Now, as far as like physical uh, things, I can't make any promises about that right now. We'll no promises about physical there. things, though, guys. But uh, again, they're available for print out on the website and through the app right now. Okay, thank you. So, okay, so if you are looking for those, they are available through the website for print and undetermined as far as getting actual physical copies of that. Now, next, well, tomorrow, we're also going to be talking about, what, what do we have? We have Bloodborne. We have Song of Ice and Fire again, right? What else do we have? I'm pulling up the schedule right now, guys. All right, so we have God of War, the card game. We have Bloodborne, the board game. And then we have a Song of Ice and Fire with Michael and Eric on it. So we're going to be live streaming all of those for you guys. So make sure and join us again tomorrow as well. We're going to be giving away some more prizes, especially I think that we have some Song of Ice and Fire stuff going on as well. So other than that, we will see you guys all later. Thank you again for joining us.